Welcome and thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're studying God's Word together uh, on these daily digital devotionals. And uh, in particular today, we're in Psalm 40, verse 7. And before we get into uh, 7 and 8, actually, and before we get into these few verses, let's pray. We praise you, O oh God, for this glorious day. Praise you, God, for your love and your faithfulness to us. I praise you for your grace through Christ that pardons our sins. Thank you for your word, which is perfect. And I pray now, Holy Spirit, uh, make its perfection powerfully applicable in our lives, that we would live to praise you and to delight in you as our greatest joy. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. David writes this, Then I said, quote, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Now, David here is not describing himself. David is prophesying. David is so swept up into intimacy and closeness with God by the Spirit that, that he's moved in such a way to declare God's word. And David here is saying, then I said, and it's almost as if he's like, I'm, I don't even understand what I'm saying, but I'm going to say it. Behold, I have come. He's describing one who will come. Now recall, David here in Psalm 40 is talking about trusting God in the midst of difficulties and, and uh, problems. That In verse 1, he talks about how he waits patiently for the Lord. He inclines and hears my cry. God comes and rescues and redeems and restores David, and he knows that this comes through a Redeemer, one who will come. Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. The word of God, all of it points to Christ. When we read any scripture, one of the things that we must do is see how it points to, relates to, or is connected to the fulfillment of all that God has declared and done in Christ. That is why Jesus is so central to who we are to the church and to diminish or to explain away Jesus is to do great harm to the reality of who we are and who God is. Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me. And this is what is written. I delete, delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. Jesus is the embodiment of God whereby all that he did, all that he said, all that he desired, all that he thought upon was directed at pleasing and praising the Father. And this is perpetual. This is how it was in eternity past before the creation. And this is how it ever will be. And this is when God made man and woman, when Adam and Eve were made, they were made to be those that would delight to do God's will. But the law was not written in their heart. The law was given as an external command, and external commands will never reform or conform the heart. And so Christ says here, the law is within my heart, and in Christ the law then becomes in us. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. When we trust Jesus, we are brought from darkness to light, death to life. We are, our relationship with the word of God changes whereby it is no longer just external commands that we have to live up to, but it becomes an internal life that we get to enjoy. This is our greatest joy. Some of us think it's our sports team winning. Some of it's thinking, you know, getting to hold our first grandbaby. Some of us think it's getting into the college that we, we've always dreamed about or landing that dream job. Uh, friends, the greatest joy is nothing that we can attain in this life, but the greatest joy is what God has attained for us in Christ. And in Christ, we will have joy everlasting. Trust him and know that he is good. I'll see you again next time.